welcome to Gulf South Outdoors. The rocky coast off the west and northeast coast of the United States provides plenty of habitat for sea life. The same is true for South Florida and the Caribbean with the coral reefs to be found there. But while fishing the northern gulf is still my favorite, this area is pretty much an enormous sandy plain. That's why shipwrecks and oil rigs are such popular fishing spots. Of course, one way to create more habitat is with artificial reefs, and that's what today's episode is all about. Now, you might think it's a simple job, but as you'll see today, it's anything but. In fact, it proved to be more dangerous than anyone imagined. Now, the Mississippi Gulf Fishing Banks is one group that's working hard to create more artificial habitat for fishing and diving. Here's Ralph Humphrey, president of that group, to tell us more. Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Humphrey. I'm the president of the Mississippi Gulf Fishing Banks. We're out here today at the H&H Boat Yard um, looking at this 55-foot steel hull sailboat. We're in the process of uh, cleaning it up, getting it environmentally sound, and uh, our uh, goal is to get it sunk out in the uh, Gulf of Mexico as an artificial reef. Um, the Gulf Fishing Banks has been around for uh, since the late 60s, and uh, our, our mission is to enhance sport fishing and diving. And by way of doing that, we, we sink artificial reefs. Sometimes it's steel hull boats, sometimes it's concrete, derelict, uh, derelict shrimp boats, whatever we can get our hands on. Um, we work hand in hand with the Department of Marine Resources, their artificial reef program, and um, uh, we got a bunch of work ahead of us. This thing has to be scrubbed. There's a lot of debris inside of it. It sat on the bottom uh, for quite some time. It was salvaged, um, and now we're going to do our best to get it all cleaned up and, and put it back in the water. One of the big concerns is um, making sure that it doesn't sink again on the way out. Um, it's, it's, it's old, it's got holes in it. We're gonna, uh, we have to actually drill more holes in it and patch them. Um, then we've got a long ways to go. We're at the head of Bernard Bayou here at the end, end of the industrial uh, seaway. So there's a long, a long way to tow this barge down the canal, um, uh, all the way across the bay, then across the sound and, and down off of Horn Island. Right now our plan is to sink it within nine miles of Horn Island. Uh, the reason we're gonna shoot for that is because the uh, uh, Congress has recently approved the uh, state of Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi to manage reef fish uh, out to nine miles. Previous to that, it was three miles. So nine miles of state waters. Uh, we all have state uh, snapper seasons now. So we'll put it in either Fish Haven 2 or Fish Haven 13, roughly 65 to 75 feet of water, um, but within the nine mile limit. So it'll be an um, opportunity for anglers to go out there and fish and dive. Um, within state waters. The 17-ton Vandenberg sunk off the coast of Key West is one example of a very large artificial reef. But creating artificial reefs is not always as easy as it might seem. That's right. In 2002, we were running my boat Vixen through the Keys and spotted a partially sunken ship. It turns out that when attempting to sink the USS Spiegel Grove, the vessel capsized unexpectedly. Air still trapped in the hull kept the bow, bow slightly above water, leaving the ship partially afloat. It took three weeks to finally sink it to the bottom. But today's episode is about a smaller project to sink a steel hull sailboat. And as you'll soon see, our own local attempt did not go as planned either. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Gulf South Outdoors. The Deepwater Mafia crew joined forces with Mississippi Gulf Fishing Banks to help prepare the boat ready to be sunk and then to be involved firsthand in sinking it. Here's Bob Brown to tell us more. Bob the Pirate here, Deepwater Mafia. Deepwater Mafia and fishing banks go way back in sinking artificial reefs. As partners, we've sunk other ships, we've sunk reef balls, we've sunk concrete culverts. We're getting pretty good at it. So I had this idea, we're gonna sink the Jolly Fisherman. Well, what if we rode the Jolly Fisherman down in 55 foot deep of water with it? like a raging wild bull going down under the water and us riding it. 
I think I've run over it in my head many times. I really think this is a good idea and I really think it's gonna work. How can it not work? September 22nd, 2017. Time to do the Jolly Fisherman sailboat. Got a good crew with me, got Omar, Ocean Sniper, Todd. Rebel, 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 Salty Stay tuned for more Gulf South Outdoors. When we come back, we've got more with Mississippi Gulf Fishing Banks and Deepwater Mafia right after this. So finally, the boat was ready and in position. It would seem like they're home free, but not so fast. They're about to have a date with Murphy's Law. Hindsight is always 2020. It looked like a good idea. I may have miscalculated a little bit. Not a great idea. Crazy, that was crazy. I go out here for my very first time. Out that far, you take me out there and what am I thinking? Oh, we're gonna go out there and just watch this boat go down. And then you guys all get on the boat. You're on the side of the boat. What were you guys thinking? This was not gonna happen the way you wanted it to. So the plan was that the boat would slowly sink to the bottom with the Deepwater Mafia crew along for a pleasant ride. But that's not what happened. As the boat began to sink, it dropped much more quickly than anyone expected, putting the crew in danger of being injured or drowned. Tracy's concern proved valid. With the divers strewn everywhere, the immediate concern was locating all of them and verifying that no one had been trapped in the wreck. So I was the first one to go from top to the bottom afterwards looking for people. Everybody was scattered down there. Fins were scattered. They weren't even on their feet. If one of them had been knocked unconscious or had his regulator damaged, there was a real danger they wouldn't all make it. The worried topside crew launched a frantic search. Their fins got knocked off them, mask got turned knocked off, and I was just counting heads. I was just trying to find out how many people we had on top of the water, how many people we had on the bottom, and who was missing. Everybody's accounted for. Everybody, we got all eight. What if we stay back? No. No, 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 no. Well, all's well that ends well. That's right. And when we come back on GSO, we'll have our clip of the week. This is the Road to the Conference USA Championship, presented by Overtime Sports. This week in Conference USA Baseball, the nation's 15th ranked team, Southern Miss, looked to continue early season success against the Ohio State Buckeyes. Southern Miss jumped out to a quick lead early, carrying a 6-3 lead into the eighth. The Buckeyes offense sparked in the eighth with a series of singles, a walk, and an error that led to four runs and a 7-6 advantage. The Buckeyes added two insurance runs in the ninth to win the game 9-6 and get the upset victory over the top 15 team. Conference USA's other top-ranked team, Florida Atlantic, traveled to Eugene, Oregon Saturday to take on the Ducks. FAU scored four runs in the fourth, a deficit too big for the Oregon offense to respond. FAU won the game 5-0. 
In other action, Marshall put together 17 hits in a 14-5 win against Appalachian State. UTSA piled on 18 hits, routing of McNeese State, and Louisiana Tech struggled to get the bats going in a 6-1 loss against Baylor. Here are the current standings for Conference USA, with FAU and Southern Miss claiming the top two spots, both at 8-3. Marshall sits at third with a 6-3 record, and Charlotte and Louisiana Tech round out the top five. Conference USA in-conference play begins this week as teams fight to improve their records, all with a vision for the CUSA Championship at MGM Park in Biloxi. For more information about the Conference USA Championship, visit mgmparkbiloxi.com. This is the Road to the Conference USA Championship, presented by Overtime Sports. weeks after the boat was sunk, the Deepwater Mafia crew returned to check it out. Once a wreck settles to the bottom, regardless of how it got there, it's devoid of any type of life. Then a process begins to attract marine life. As you can see here, the wreck soon becomes encrusted with algae and marine plants begin to grow, attracting small fish to this new habitat and food source. Here, they can also find protection from the predators which are sure to arrive soon. Schools of baitfish and juveniles are among the first to arrive along with occasional remora. Before long, larger pelagic and predator species such as snapper, grouper, moray eels, kingfish, mackerels, barracudas, and even sharks, they all show up to feed on these smaller species and the food chain is completed.
Today we uh, worked with some soft shell crabs, some fresh soft shell crabs that were caught not too far from here. Um, we did a um, crawfish and crab stuffing with a little Tex-Mex twist on it with some Wahio peppers and some chili powder, a little lime juice, cilantro, and we... Uh, Starting with the dressing, which is a no-cook, cold-prepared dressing. In a mixing bowl, you're going to combine the crawfish tails, crab meat, a little crystal hot sauce, Worcestershire sauce, mayonnaise, splash of lime juice, a few sliced green onions, a little Dijon mustard for a binder, and then just enough breadcrumbs to get it tight, just enough to bind it. Lastly, we're going to fold in a little bit of cilantro just to give it a southwest twist. The crabs we're working with today were caught not far from here, here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Soft shells are pretty easy to clean. Basically, you pull back the back flap, tear off the tail, open the sides, tear off the dead man fingers. Now, the dead man fingers won't kill you, but they're not recommended for consumption. I would stay away from them. Some people remove the fat under the shell while others prefer it. And it's pretty tasty. Once the crab is clean, we're going to take a pinch of our dressing and stuff under the shell into the corners of the crab underneath the top. Then we're going to do a standard egg wash, seasoned flour, egg wash dip. You know, while I worked over in New Orleans, it, during soft shell crab seasons, we'd do, we'd do hundreds orders of them. And if we didn't fry them just right, if we didn't flip it right into the fryer just right and those legs are standing up beautiful, the chef would send it back to us with a few choice words. It just makes a better presentation. Soft shell crab, as we know, is a boneless crab, so there, it's you know you need a little crisp to it. I mean, some people do grill them, but when you grill them, they kind of shrivel up. So I like to fry them and get an outside coat on there, to get it get nice and crispy. I like to for when you dump it in the fryer for the legs to be sticking straight up as far as presentation. And in our pan, we're going to make a a pan sauce, a Southwest corn pan sauce. So we have our roasted corn, onions, little cherry tomatoes in there. We have some wahio peppers which is a very mild pepper to add to the Southwest flavor. Next, we had some heavy cream, a little chili powder, a little bit of Borgian cheese. Let that thicken, you can see the richness in it, see the creaminess. Well, the seafood flavors there, I mean, the, the crab meat is, is buttery and it's rich and it's, it's, it's wonderful. So you definitely get the seafood flavor, but it also carries on into the creamy southwestern type uh, flavors. So while that's reducing down, it's starting to thicken, we're going to go ahead and put our soft shell on the plate. And this wonderful sauce is going to go right over the top of the soft shell. And then to finish it off, we're going to have a little bit of cilantro. This is something that I've done for a few competitions. That's something that I enjoy, enjoy doing. Um, I've done it uh, for a few few banquets and things like that in my in my career that people really liked. And there you have it: beautiful fried guff soft shell crab with a Tex-Mex cream sauce. Thanks for joining us this week on Gulf South Outdoors. Tune in next week where you have another shot to find your outdoors. We'll see them then.